So our project in general was to bring awareness to the various coping mechanisms that help relieve issues in regards to mental health through an educational, sensory and immersive experience. Initially, I came up with the idea for this project. Uh, the project didn't have the calm element to it. it. It was a lot more sadistic, I guess. It was just kind of showing people uh, sort of the effects of how mental health can be quite detrimental to some people. Um, mm -hmm. And to kind of, I guess, show a sort of a day in the life of someone who stru maybe struggles with like severe anxiety or depression. One in six people experience a common mental disorder like depression or anxiety weekly. 140,000 men aged between 18 and 35 received psychological therapy for a mental disorder between 2016 and 2017, with the number of women being 240,000. 75% of young people are not receiving treatment for a mental disorder. More than half of young people link mental illness with isolation and alienation. 6% of the UK health budget goes on mental health. Suicide is the biggest cause of death amongst men and women aged 20 to 34. Definitions of a coping mechanism. An adaptation to environmental stress that is based on conscious or unconscious choice that enhances control over behaviour or gives psychological comfort. There are numerous positive and negative coping mechanisms. Here are some examples of some positive coping mechanisms. Meditation and relaxation, time to yourself, physical activity or exercise, reading, friendship, watching TV, negative coping mechanisms, drugs, excessive alcohol use, dysfunctional eating and excessive work. My name is Tom Kelly and I wrote the calm composition for our sound application project. I wrote it on piano as it's my first study instrument and it's an instrument known to have quite calming capabilities. I wrote it with quite diatonic harmonic progressions with like the occasional modulation to keep the listener interested without overwhelming them with too many changes. So it was kind of based around the tonal sense of E minor, it moved around a lot and in the left hand was just mainly held chords with occasional arpeggiations. The BPM was matched to what would be the chaotic composition made mainly on the Max MSP software, which was around 85 BPM. After composing it and bouncing it down to uh, a WAV bar, I added some extra reverb to make the piece sound a bit more gentle to the listener and recorded it to MIDI to help with the Max MSP software compatibility. Niles, uh, some of the sounds he got out of the synths for his EP and then some of the stuff that I was doing with um, Xmas just gave us a load of different sounds to work with and then we came yeah. in to here, Studio 2, and then we found the uh, drums and stuff like that and just kind of started hitting stuff around. Yeah. And we definitely didn't yeah. plan for that, I don't think. And shouted at a microphone for a bit. Yeah, <laughs> sort of yeah. Quite well. yeah all those high-pitched and roary sounds, they're all, they're all heavily processed Nile. <laughs> that's, that's always a fun one.
studio created for the installation drew from aspects of films to help create a creepy atmosphere. As well as others, we looked at Ant Head by David Lynch and Transfiguration by Olivier de Sargazan. The footage was collected for free on various stock footage websites as we didn't have the resources to record our own. I searched for particularly creepy videos both for the main content of the video and things like this x-ray chart for fillers. Once all the footage was created, it was then time to edit. I tried to fit the video to the music as best as possible, using beats in the instrumental to cut the video to. This was to make the experience more immersive. Alright, so this here is the max patch for the soap installation, Calm to Chaotic. Uh, it's relatively simple in the way it works. The first thing that happens is you have a key here that just takes anything from the keyboard and transfers that into a MIDI note here. So when these are pressed, these buttons here will change. And most importantly, this here will change. So this here will just make sure that every key that's pressed will turn out into a multiple of 12. So it'll only be, sorry, it'll be anywhere from one to 12. So yeah, we're getting a lot of different uh, numbers there. So this draws down into the select portion here. And what this does, it chooses between any of these. So a lot of these aren't used uh, because it becomes difficult when you're trying to deal with lower numbers to get uh, the right keys to press the right buttons. So 12 was a good number I found to make sure that, because um, we were using a makey makey, uh, WASD and the arrow keys and the space bar were able to all give us a different number every time. So that's the reason that it's at 12 at the moment. Um, so read for denial is on one, relax is on four, isolation is on seven and drugs is on 11. This button here just starts off the whole thing. So if we see behind here, this is the main video just starting. So that will start off the whole thing, that's the start of the experience. So when people uh, press the buttons, that will come through on the key, because it's connected to the makey makey. It will go out through to the MIDI, become a, a number here, and then select out of these ones. So if we click on here, that's the same as someone clicking the first button, which uh, makes number one here. Uh, the way this works is that every time a button's pressed, it rereads it, so it reloads it back into the um, uh, project as a whole. Uh, this is because every time we want someone to press the button, we didn't want them to start halfway through a video, so I thought that was important. Uh, this did cause a problem though, uh, because we wanted to have it so every time the button was pressed, it became less effective the next time, uh, but because it reloaded, I had to make it so they were all the same. If I had more time, which uh, I wish I did, I would have made it so there was another select screen under this that had a um, sequencer attached to it. So every time this select here was pre uh, triggered, it would move on to another one and then would have another version of the video that was less effective. Um, but between me and Niall who made the videos, we didn't have that much time to make that much extra content and make the patch that much more extravagant. Uh, so this is what we came out with. It worked well on the day, nothing broke, which is a godsend. Everything seemed to work well. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. You caught me just in time to wire up the Makey Makey with me. Would you like to join in? This wire here, from the W on the Makey Makey, goes to the on switch on the red button, which is going to be the kill switch. Hi. You've got us just in time to test our David Lynch machine. As you can see, we've created a nice, a beautiful, 
relaxation scape for the for the world to listen to. And then we can click this button. And suddenly I've taken too many drugs. I'm in a downward cycle. I don't feel too great. I'm not feeling great. Oh no, suddenly um, I want to put myself in isolation. Voices in my head. <laughs> Denial. <laughs> relaxation, relaxation. I'm not relaxed, I'm not relaxed. Oh, beautiful sight of the sea and a seagull soaring through the air. Oh, I feel so much better now. Too much is too much. Kill switch.
bitch. <laughs> So we're going to take some time now to go through what we were saying in the presentation compared to what actually happened on the day. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the music, the video, uh, how the research impacted that. As a sort of music course, we'll start off with the music and we'll start off with the first piece that goes in. So uh, Tom, how do you think the uh, music turned out compared to what you thought it was going to be before you wrote it? Well, Milo, I felt that the music turned out the way that it was intended. So when beginning the music, it was obviously intended to be calming to the listener and for the person taking part in our installation. So I felt like that worked out quite well, especially with the things that I did in the compositional process. From the results from our questionnaire, from our actual sound installation, we found that several people specifically mentioned that they liked the calming music and said that it worked well and served its function. With the video, I found that because we'd finished the music and finished the... Uh, transitions of the music before I started the video which I found really useful because it meant I could make the video fit the, fit the tone of, of the audio yeah. rather than because as we said we didn't expect the music to turn out the way it did and sound the way it did I think if I'd have made the video prior to it it would have been completely different it wouldn't have had fit the same sort of tone I guess mentioned in the feedback that we got after on that day is that um, it did repeat itself after every single time yeah, yeah. which does make sense from the theme that we were putting forward, but from a purely kind of entertainment sense, it wasn't probably the best decision. There's a lot yeah. of things that went into it, obviously, like time constraints and stuff like that. Obviously, we didn't have all the time we wanted to do this, and we didn't have all the experience we wanted to do this, so things weren't going to be at a, a highly professional standard from the get-go. But I think that if we were doing it again, it would probably be best to kind of sprinkle some more sound yeah. and audio into it make each section like its own developing thing rather than mm. see uh, syncing it as one developing sound but originally we just yeah. we thought we were going to um use each time the code mechanism was played it would it would sort of create a different effect or we, or we said different length of time it would last for and i think had we have had a sort of yeah, less repetitive video and every time you press the button it changes what's going to happen I think that would make it a lot m much more interesting experience mm. I don't know if it would particularly change the uh, the the feel of the installation but as you say it would, would be more interesting and more enticing to, to do and yeah. you can sit there for longer and do it rather than well, it takes us into kind of user friendly stuff as well because like, obviously the patch is the bit that built it all up and that's the bit that yeah. was meant to be responsible for um, making each coping mechanism less effective. Um, turns out it's really, really difficult uh, to uh, <laughs> do that kind of stuff in Max. So the way it worked in the actual thing was that um, every video reloaded when the button was pressed and then it switched which one would go into the actual video output feed. Um, so that's why every time a button was pressed, the video would restart itself again instead of just going yeah. on from where it was. Because that's what we wanted. That was the main problem I was dealing with, the fact that if you load multiple files into the same player in Max, as soon as one plays, they all end up playing. And if you switch them, we'd miss out the bit, the bit that we wanted, which was the bit, the 30 seconds at the start. Um, but no, it all worked well, all worked kind of... Oh, I wasn't expecting the patch to not break for some <laughs> reason. I don't know why. That doesn't surprise Yeah, yeah. it's because patches like that always break, especially when you're trying to use them in a 
like audience friendly environment. Yeah. I guess the patch did seem pretty like bulletproof. Like, yeah. throughout the day, like it didn't. Yeah. It seemed to. It was. It, it didn't seem to not work at all. Like, no, as soon yeah. as it was plugged in, it went straight through. But also as well, like the initial idea was to kind of have uh, the buttons every time you push them to uh, go and have the same af- have the same effect, but it gets slowly uh, less and less profound to kind of show how coping mechanisms kind of you know they are they are only a temporary thing. They're not a um, you know like a long term solution. Yeah. Um, so I guess one thing, if we did it again, one thing we could have done was just again have maybe the same video clips, just with a slightly more degraded version of the audio, and then you could then potentially put in like a, you know, an extra selector yeah. on what would what would go through. But yeah. uh, obviously, it's just somewhere we would like to. If we did do it again, that could be something we uh, we would look into. Yeah, that's not to say necessarily that we we're talking about negative things. Not to say that the thing went no. bad either. Exactly. Like yeah. we got a lot of people coming in, multiple it was very unexpected. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, some people got it. Some people kind of came in because they were coming into an installation. Yeah, because um, obviously people. So so people came into the room uh, that we weren't expecting. weren't weren't all just people we knew. Just people people who walked past and saw saw the the posters which were developed by Julian. The posters I I threw together pretty quickly. I, like I spoke amongst the group and I was um we kind of the calm to chaotic side of things. So initially I thought sort of like static imagery. Like a sort of please stand by kind of TV thing, which ne- which eventually mm. became the final picture. Then uh, Niall actually had the idea of using like a teletext font on the actual poster to kind of uh, you know again give that kind of everything's kind of gone down. You know this is what the last thing so you like turn to I guess. Um, and then it was just a case of I printed a bunch of them off, stuck them around Eldon. Um, we post we made like an event on Facebook. We tried sharing that around as well. Um, it didn't help though. One of the things we would do if we did it again would not be to have the installation during reading week, because uh, that yeah. that was unfortunately that was the only time we could really kind of get it done. Um, but if we were to do it again, obviously we would definitely like market it a lot more, and mm. try and you know actually get a large group of people to do um, do the exhibition with these all these other changes that we've already previously mentioned. Originally we'd planned to have a smaller room than we actually did have in the end, and we only had that because of uh, projector issues. Which obviously, yeah. if it wasn't reading week, we might have not been able to access another room anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, but also, if we had lots more people turn up at the same time, we, because it was a an installation where one person did, it one was one at a time. time yeah. It was better if, that we had yeah. that bigger room. Yeah, because yeah, but also the, there's if if twenty people turn up at once, it would take forever to get. They wouldn't all be able to do it, and they wouldn't all stay there to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we never really had a queue too long. There was a point where I think we had a four or five yeah, four people five. waiting, but yeah. it wasn't too yeah. bad. Going back to sort of the design and the aesthetics, I think if we were to do it again, I imagine we all agree it would would be a good. Even though we actually, I think we made the best of a bad situation on the day in making a classroom not look like a classroom. Yeah, um, yeah. <coughs> yeah. I think if we were to do it again as well as changing the way the video and the music works, it would be good to have a, a really well-decorated room, dark yeah. room or whatever yeah. for, for the... Yeah, because yeah, that was also on the feedback as well, that mm. they, the aesthetics try and make it darker. It does. I guess it didn't help as well that we had quite a, like, a very well-lit room, yeah. um, which obviously <laughs> I know is like for obviously university purposes, that is great, but uh, for what we were trying to do, we really wanted to have something... I if, again, if we did it again, it would definitely be more something a lot more claustrophobic, a lot more uh, sort of like dark, loads of like fairy lights and stuff kind of all around. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah. We did toy around with the idea at one point of having like sort of a, like a bed sheet or like a blacked out sheet kind of over the participants so they could just see what was in front of them. But obviously, logistics wise, it was difficult to do. And obviously, with the projector, if we were just getting them to watch a laptop screen, then it would have been yeah. much more, um, I guess, intimate in that sense. Yeah. But, um, I really like the idea of the participant being like in a small room on their own and I think that would be amazing but in terms of logistics it's kind of impossible in the uni yeah um, mm. I think maybe if we were to do it in the same room but perhaps like where the windows are maybe like just put like some dark black sheets like you were saying yeah. across the window so like you know I'll say we were happy with how 
fast the process was per person. If somebody had something else to do during the day, they could only have been there for less than 10 minutes. It was really up to the participant how long they wanted to spend yeah. in the room. Use the kill switch to end it at any point as well. Yeah, yeah we, did, we did get some uh, feedback about that, kind of being like, I don't know, like, you should have explained the buttons more. Then I do wonder from the feedback of what where the misconceptions of the purpose of the installation yeah and whether or not they the participants were to press buttons or not whether we should have had like an information sheet so they sort of knew what to do we did briefly explain to everyone that came in yeah and there was a brief description on the posters as well yeah i think i think if we if you if we would have given too much information out it would defeat the purpose a little in a, in, a, in a small way and as Milo was saying um, there's if if you if you're telling people what to do by saying press these buttons to change it it does mean that people will press all the buttons whereas the purpose of it isn't really for everyone to press all the buttons yeah. it's yeah. for them to have an experience that's sort of individual to themselves whilst being at them we I'd say we're happy how immersed uh, several of the people got as they some people spent quite a lot of time uh, taking yeah. part in the installation, which we were happy with, instead of just quickly running through and then pressing the kill switch. Like, we didn't want to tell people too much right. about the exhibit because, um, again, to tie it back to the whole concept of, you know, coping mechanisms is something you do sort of subconsciously, it's something you don't necessarily think too much about. Um, it's, you know, mm. your, you know, your brain kind of does it uh, just to try and get away from whatever you're trying to get away from. Um, so, mm. but ideally, maybe we were, obviously there's a stimuli which causes this, and even though we did have that stimuli in our um, exhibition, um, installation, sorry, it didn't tend to, we didn't, uh, like, because we didn't speak to them enough, maybe a lot yeah. of people didn't quite get it, which um, which was a bit of a shame, but it's, in it, if we did it again, we'd have to really yeah. think of how much we would want to tell them, I think. I think if we did it again, perhaps yeah. we should speak to them a little bit more before they did it. I don't know, I'd prefer to put the focus on making the installation self-explanatory rather yeah. than yeah, talking to Yeah, because it, it, was, it was up to yeah. interpretation, which was quite nice. We got a lot of individuality from it. Yeah, I mean, really yeah. the purpose of it, you, you, if you go to any art installation, you're not expecting to speak to the artist about how they decided to do yeah. anything. Like, yeah, like, some guys yeah that's you, true. It's your yeah. own interpretation of it, yeah. which... You know, from from the feedback that we've got from this, is actually quite interesting. What people have said is the different uh, interpretations. Some people have really said it's about mental health. It's about um, uh, about uh, yeah, like issues. And then some people have just said it's about the way that music and film can can uh, be interpreted, mm. which you know p does provide quite an interesting uh, talking point. But I think. As you say, it would make a lot more sense for an installation just to be you completely uh, intuitive when you go and you don't have to think about what yeah. is about what it's it's all obvious to you. Yeah. yeah. And how to do it. Which obviously there is credit in things like this being nuanced and you leaving kind of being like I'm not really sure what what they were trying to tell me because it's a bit of a mind piece. The and job was, roles yeah. were kind of identified very early on, which yeah. was nice. Yeah, because, um, like, for instance, my role in this project was I came up with the idea and I had some ideas of how to implement it, but I don't, I personally don't have the, te the uh, technological know how to implement. So, uh, so both um, Milo and Niall did really help with the sort of how we could then implement these ideas into a practical, in a practical way. Um, and when we did get everything uh, kind of sorted out, um, the roles kind of felt natural in the fact that it went on a nice timeline. Mm. So we yeah. had meetings with everyone where it was like, okay, what should we do? This is what we're doing, kind of doing this, this, these are your jobs, go now. And then everyone was gone for a bit. Yeah. But that, that was like nice because we didn't, we didn't really feel the need to have to meet up every single week and be like, oh, okay, so yeah. should we do this, should we do that? Because all that would have happened is we would have second-guessed ourselves every yeah, time yeah. and changed yeah. it. We, we did have uh, several group meetings throughout the term yeah but they yeah. were only sort of catch-ups just to make sure everyone was along the right lines yeah. and you yeah. what was going on having having established early on who 
who was doing what did make it quite nice in terms of like we when we like we would meet up to do to do the music or um we came in the studio to record yeah. and but having the well established group roles the moment that we didn't need everyone here for a recording session that only needs two people. Adam agreed with our um with our project within like the first three weeks of teaching this year. Yeah. Everyone in September. Yeah. So I think we were we were quick getting the ball rolling. And we did actually surprisingly stay on top of it quite well. Yeah. yeah. Um like well there was no point like you know the, the last week before the this uh, before the installation uh, Milo and myself were I think working quite hard on getting stuff sorted for it Milo in particular getting the getting the patch all working and ready and flawless before the actual installation but actually I didn't I didn't I didn't feel like we we left it all too late or anything like that no no, no me me trying to work for the patch is more about me not being that great at max <laughs> that experience with it. it's like we we did start off very early and there were a few setbacks with it with just kind of different methods to use and mm. um yeah i would say i was especially happy with how the chaotic noises turned out they were very yeah. grating to the point that a lot of a lot of our participants agreed that yeah. they fulfilled the purpose yeah. very well the, the heartbeat in particular i think yeah. it, within the uh, isolation uh cope mechanism was so powerful and because we put a speaker underneath the table mm. that you could feel it so it was yeah. so so big and it, yeah. it was that it was, was actually kind of horrifying it was yeah. pointed out that was a very feedback, very nice yeah. uh, mistake that happened wasn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that only happened because one of the speakers was broken yeah that's so a good point yeah that was good in the hindsight kind of, yeah we probably maybe could have actually used a bass amp or something as a yeah we, we i did speak when wick came in to do the installation I did speak to him and he said that we should have taken the subwoofer across <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, which would have been cool but you know we have actually worked quite well it was nice because originally we, we only um, we only wanted to have the monitors as a way of other people that are in the room not not just the participant could hear what was going on it wasn't really meant for the participant at all and we did put two up at the front and then one of them t- turned out to be faulty and we just very quickly yeah. decided as it was getting close to the time when the, when the installation started that we just chuck it under the table yeah. and use it as a sort of sub and it, it worked amazingly yeah. I guess one thing we could have done uh, if we were going to do it again is maybe look into having more of like a surround sound kind of rig yeah um, that'd be cool which I can sure in Max would have been an absolute nightmare um, but like <laughs> even though I, I think the, yeah, the stereo the aspect yeah. aspect that we ended up with worked quite well. It was quite immersive. Yeah. The participants having especially the yeah. and everything, I especially in the closer yeah. room as well. Yeah, when when you have headphones on as well, it really does make everything. Uh, I think because as soon as you have other other uh, environment sounds and stuff, the people yeah. in the back of the room chatting and things, it takes away from it so much. It became more of a personal experience. Like, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you can't hear anything else, and and it. And it really does sort of take over. Every, you can't you can't think about other things whilst you're in it because it's so powerful mm. in your brain. Yeah, we were happy with how it turned out. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you know, judging from the from the feedback, we could have maybe you know, changed changed some elements of it. Mm. But I think in general, it went it went well. Yeah. As was reflected in our feedback, lots of people were. Yeah happy with the overall experience a lot of people yeah, enjoyed our unenjoyable experience which, um, <laughs> and it should be I guess was it a good a good installation yeah. yeah good installation i think that's personally as well like we got a lot from doing it yeah so just kind of actually running an event like that even if it was small scale mm. um providing incentives for stuff we did, we did marketing and things like that mm. just, just all the kind of individual skills that go into a collaborative project like that. Um, when things don't work, it's when I think you find the yeah. best. The best ways of you doing adapt. things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From adaption. Um, of course, to get more reliable results, if we had more participants turn up, yeah. that would have been great. But I'll say we were satisfied with the amount of participants in general. Yeah. yeah. Given yeah, the time as well. about seventy percent of them were males. Yeah, that is actually one thing that <laughs> would, would be yeah, and our age, in yeah. in terms of of making uh, having a, having a better 
better feedback and, and a better installation in general would be to have a you more know diverse. large yeah more diverse group um, of people because the the vast majority of people were eighteen to twenty five males that did yeah. the survey mm. um, and it would have been good to have you know a lot more a lot a lot more um, people from different genders as well as uh, age ranges yeah as well as age ranges because yeah. yeah that would be that would be useful uh, results I think yeah definitely yeah.